way we grow and produce food is ever-changing, shaped by consumers and the climate in which we live and farm. Research at all points of our food system is essential for continuously improving food's journey from farm to table. The Manitoba Agriculture and Food Knowledge Exchange explores timely research innovations and applications that make our food system better than ever. Join us for today's podcast. Welcome to the Manitoba Agriculture and Food Knowledge Exchange podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Sasiwa, and today we're talking about the Verified Beef Production Plus program. It's one of those programs that I don't think enough consumers know about, and it's something that I really want people to understand that there is programming out there and there is options out there for consumers to know that your beef products are being produced in the best way possible, but I'm not going to be the one to talk about it. As usual, we've got an expert to do just that. We've got the provincial rep for the program, Betty Green, and Betty, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I'm a cattle rancher in the Interlake in, uh, here in Manitoba. So we have a cow-calf operation and a background in feedlot and a small full-blood Semitol uh, herd. So uh, uh, that's my life story, kind of. Um, I love ranching. That's what I like to hear is, is anytime someone loves their career, you know that what they're going to be talking about comes from the heart. And, and you are passionate about the care and and quality of life for your livestock and that has led into a whole career on uh, in the verified beef that's right so the verified beef plus program is is really a program for producers built by producers uh, with lots of support from scientists researchers and so forth Um, it really is a program that helps producers uh, meet industry standards in the areas of food safety, animal care, the environment, and biosecurity. Well, and it's funny because the way that we got connected is I was I was uh, obviously working with the University of Manitoba, the agriculture, uh, the, the faculty of agricultural and food sciences, and they're the ones that said, "Who you need to talk to is Betty Green, and she'll walk you through." biosecurity in, in, in detail and, and talk about this Verified Beef Plus program. So let's let's talk biosecurity. Sure. Well, Ma- Canada is uh, was the very first country in the world to develop a biosecurity standard for the beef industry. And biosecurity was, I would think, one of the things that producers kind of put on the back burner. Um, and, and so when I was asked to participate in this, I thought, wow, this is going to be a bit of a challenge, a little bit of a learning curve, but I was absolutely amazed at how they grasped the ideas and in many ways taught us what we needed to be thinking about. I, I was just going to say, what, what, when we're talking biosecurity, because it, it sounds, I think it sounds a lot more scary than, than it really is. So what is biosecurity? Biosecurity is um, the prevention uh, of disease or the containment so that we're, we're uh, able to control the disease within a herd uh, or within an area. It's just making sure nothing spreads, basically. At the That's end, right. And the long and the short of it is our, our researchers at the University of Manitoba and cattle ranchers across Canada because that's the other part of this is it's not just Manitoba where we're super proud to live, but it's across Canada. That's right. It was just a discussion on how do we make sure we can contain our our livestock and, yes. and anything that happens. So that's sorry to have interrupted you, but that was just <laughs> for me to understand the biosecurity. Yeah. Well, and it's economic, right? We want to maintain a healthy herd in Canada, in Manitoba, and on our farm. So it really steps through all of those levels and has an influence. Um, Producers were quick to grasp that and partner with their veterinarians. So we really encourage producers, of course, to have vet client patient relationships. We call it a VCPR. And producers often lean on their vets to help them develop a biosecurity plan on their farm. Interesting. And and this is, I guess, the beauty of it is we've got our producers. So the person producing my 
food at the end of the day is working closely in, in relationship with a vet and is is looking to produce the best product possible because they want me at the end of the day happy with what they've produced absolutely interesting now how does this kind of continue to to grow how does the the verified beef program continue to, to grow and, and prosper well we start out by training producers on on the topics that i outlined and today we're going to talk about biosecurity in terms of biosecurity we ask them to assess their farm for risks so identify the practices that they have on their farm that may introduce a risk of a disease or a noxious weed or you know it's it's broader than just disease uh, once they've taken that kind of risk assessment uh, we ask them to identify the highest risk and start to implement or find ways to mitigate that so if we talk about animals first because that's the one that comes to mind first uh, producers will be very quick to tell us that their first strategy is always prevention. So that may uh, mean good management practice on, practices on the farm, uh, you know, lots of straw and making sure that animals are in safe and secure environments, um, making sure they're well vaccinated. So that's where they come in with the vet and find out what the prevalent diseases are, what vaccines are most effective and that's their first step. And, and I think I, I want to say something here because I've been, I've had the fortune of working with a lot of amazing researchers now. And when we're talking disease and, and vaccination and, and things like that, I, I think it's important to, to talk about humans as well. I was vaccinated as a kid. Right. Because the prevalent diseases that are still out there, the chicken pox and, and all this kind of stuff, it's a, it's a real risk for, for humans as well. It's not any different in the animal world. So when, 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 I hear, when I hear experts talking about disease control, you know, I used to have that moment of like, oh, I go a little bug-eyed. And then I had it explained to me, it's just like, you know, somebody said, are you vaccinated? I'm like, of course I am. I don't wanna, I don't wanna get a prevalent disease. Exactly. And it's the same thing. And this is, and this is I guess, where the conversation of biosecurity starts. Absolutely. It's no different for our cattle. When they're newborns, uh, we, we will vaccinate them right from the outset to offset some of those childhood young animal diseases. And as they follow through life, there's you know boosters or new vaccines introduced at certain stages of their life. And, and like I say, that, that to me was a... I guess an aha moment, as they call it, where I, I always, you associate hearing someone talk about disease with it as a bad thing, right? Versus, we've got producers looking to make the best environment for the animals that they care for. Absolutely. All right. All right. So, how does that kind of the next step? So we've got we've got uh, producers and. and looking at, at risks, then what do they do? So once they have a good vaccination program in place, then we ask them to take it a, a look at it from other angles. So where are you introducing your cattle to risk? Uh, one of those might be with commingling. Uh, so that just means where they interact with other cattle. So that may be at a show or a fair, a 4-H, um, event um, and so how do you prepare for those activities how do you minimize the potential of a disease transmission during those times and again you make sure their vaccinations are up to speed you make sure that there's a standard at the fair that you're attending that other people have to vaccinate as well um, you make sure your animal's healthy you would never introduce an animal that's highly stressed um, you know, a newly weaned calf or a newborn baby calf. And so this is, it, it really is just making sure that the, the producers are one step ahead. It is. And that's, and you, and, and as a, as a project, the Verified Beef Program has said, think about these things and let us help you 
make some good decisions. Sure. We always say that there's uh, good, better, best, and don't let the, the um, approach of excellence uh, get in the way of doing things well. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's no way of preventing all diseases all of the time. There are ways to minimize that. So the best would be to have a closed herd, never introduce new incoming animals, uh, have no animals that are have nose-to-nose -nose contact with your cattle. But that's not achievable. There's <laughs> virtually impossible to achieve that goal. So what's the best practice that you can achieve and still meet your your operational needs interesting and that's and that's what we're seeing a lot of now what kind of what is the, the goal of the verified beef program and, and what you're up to where where do you guys look to in the future i think it is to um, establish those guidelines those uh, standards for producers in terms of at the farm level those standards are there we just want to make sure all producers are aware of them and then uh, be able to convey that through a certification program. So we actually audit farmers uh, to make sure that they are meeting those needs. That too builds on consumer trust. I, I think our consumers want to know that we're doing the very best we can while we're raising our animals. Well, and it's funny that you say that because again, I, I take this back to, I get to do these podcasts, but I also get educated as I go. <laughs> and this was something where when it was first brought to my attention th through the faculty that, that this was something that this verified beef program, one, had a whole bunch of researchers that have contributed to best care and procedures, but two, as a consumer, I, I love the fact that I, I know then that, that there's standard operating procedures, there's audits, there's all of those things going on if somebody's in the verified beef program. That's right. And it really is about continuous improvement. As I said, we ask our producers to develop a biosecurity plan. Once they've mitigated one risk, then we move on to the next, the lower risk. Uh, there's an awful lot of things that producers are really good at. Vaccinating their cattle, making sure their tools are clean and, and ready for use, that they don't use um, uh, tools that they've used on a sick animal and then go ahead and use it on a healthy animal. They don't want to transmit disease themselves. All of those things, you know, they, they become more aware of. And as the awareness rises, your, your operation improves in terms of your biosecurity plan. And so it's, it's, it's funny to me because that, that sounds just common sense. If you've used a tool with a sick animal, don't, but but on a farm, it, it's, you know, I, I've got a, a baby on the way. And th those things sound that, like as somebody that would be raising a child. But when you're talking about producers and, and large producers, you're talking about three, four, five hundred children and a constant movement of, of animals. It is. So it, it's, it sounds like, well, that should be, you should just do that. But they're doing so many things that if that operating procedure isn't in place, that's why it can get forgotten if I'm... That's right. You know, one of the things that kind of have given some producers an aha moment is when we say, always feed or treat your healthy animals first and then your sick animals. And it, that's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? You want to look after your sick ones, yeah. but you're increasing your chance of transmission when you're moving from sick animals, so even just transmission on your hands, on your clothes, on your boots, uh, that's increasing the risk. And, and those are the kind of, because that, you just saying that just was an aha moment for me too, of, of, like of course you would, you would want to do that and less times of contact for the animal, but it, those, I guess those are the moments too where, where you've got somebody that has done something passed down generation to generation and you just, and you have the verified beef program in an audit or whatever can come in and say, have you thought of doing it this way? Here's the research and here's why we suggest it. Exactly. Amazing. And this is, so let's, let's talk about you personally, because this is something that not only are you part of the development and 
promotion of, you do this on your own farm. Exactly. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's kind of my area of uh, responsibility. Um, my husband loves to feed cattle and loves to, uh, you know, make sure that their daily requirements are, are cared for. But if there's a sick one, he usually calls me. Uh, so, you know, newborn calves, that's my responsibility. Uh, making sure they're vaccinated, making sure all of the tools are at the ready if we need them, making sure they're clean. Um, so it is something that I do on a daily basis. And I think after a while, when you kind of turn on that switch, you're constantly looking for ways to improve. I can say with all honesty that in the last um, decade, and we've been farming for a long time, but even in the last decade, we've learned and improved immensely. Our sick animal, you know, the rate of uh, illness in our, in our cattle has gone down. Our prevention is just strong and we're constantly looking for ways to strengthen e even further. Uh, amazing. I love to hear that because for me as somebody that isn't on the farm, I grew up in the country, I, I, I miss that with all my heart. And I, I miss being around animals all the time. And it's, it's just, it's so enriching to hear and, and talk with, with farmers who say, we love what we do. If I'm a producer, how do I get involved with this? How do I find out more information on the, on the Verified Beef Program? All they have to do is contact the Manitoba Beef Producers or myself directly, and we can get you on track. Uh, the first part or the first step is to attend a, a webinar. We do them online and go through the four different topics, uh, outlining what the requirements are to become a certified Verified Beef Plus producer. Once they've done that, they uh, take a look at their operation, determine whether they're ready, and give us a call and we come out and do an on-farm audit. Amazing, now as a consumer, uh, what, what can I do to, to help or, or be a better consumer? I think the first thing is to take a look at the program and understand what requirements or standard operating procedures producers adhere to. Uh, I think consumers have a lot of questions and rightfully so. How are we raising that food product that they're ultimately wanting to enjoy and, uh, and experience? And so uh, asking the questions, again, I welcome people calling me directly to find out about the program. Uh, there's lots of information on the Manitoba Beef Producers um, connections and certainly on the Verified Beef Plus website. Uh, amazing. This, is, this conversation is not over just yet. I'm, I'm sure we're going to have you back on the podcast quite a few times.